Okay, so this is uh, ultrasonic uh, auto uh, pursuit vehicle. So go ahead. So you have a, t a 644 on this car. Uh -huh. This is called the target unit. Uh, it's an Atmega 644 processor. It's been programmed to asynchronously uh, respond to an incoming pulse. Here we have a 24 kilohertz receiver. When it detects a 24 kilohertz pulse coming in, the circuit with, uh, in, with a tone decoder uh, transmits it to the microcontroller, which on the right, on, uh, through an external interrupt, emits a 40 kilohertz pulse back to the pursuit system. Okay, so this is sort of like a transponder. It is, yeah. Okay, and then, and then this guy is listening for the, the 40 kilohertz coming back, yeah. and it's using a uh, binaural, binaural uh, microphone system to try to Correct. deduce where the sound is right. coming from. Right. Okay. So here's how the system works. The Mega 1284, which is, the, which is uh, in the pursuit unit, periodically emits a 24 kilohertz, kilohertz pulse from this transmitter. It, uh, at that point, it also starts a timer. It then waits for the response 40 kilohertz pulse from the target unit. When these, they receive it, separate uh, external interrupt ISRs record the times that elapsed um, for each of the two receivers by accounting for path duplication and for the calculation overhead, which we determined experimentally. We're able to determine the relative distance, the relative distances of the target unit for both of the receivers. Using that data, we can compute the uh, relative position of the target unit from the pursuit unit. We then uh, feed that data into a PID control loop, which controls the motors. Uh, direction control, direction control, and speed control happen independently. The car has been programmed to come within a certain range of the target unit, and at that point it stops. Okay. If the target unit, is, unit continues moving forward, of course it starts moving again. Cool. So, can I see it go? Sure. So, all the human input is restricted solely to controlling the, the forward car. Yeah, the forward car. Uh, we don't need to provide any sound, uh, of course, because this this just tracks it in real time. I think one thing we could have improved on was having, uh, because we we did have a decent amount of our budget left, we could have gotten more expensive, better. Uh, transmitters and receivers, mm -hmm. because the tiny ones we have, they cost like a dollar and a half, and uh, they have rather poor uh, Okay, so, you, so you're now starting up the front car here, yep. yes, the radio control, and the rear car is in fact following it. In theory, it should work at a higher speed, because of the space restrictions. Well, yeah, I mean, in this, in this restricted area, it's probably a good idea to keep it slow. Uh, a lot of effort also went into making sure that this car doesn't pick up reflections from other surfaces. Which it's going to do all over the place in uh, here. Which is why we ended up using two different, and one of, avoiding interference with its own emissions was the reason why we ended up using 24 kilohertz and 40 kilohertz right. instead of just a single frequency. Okay, flip it around now. Flip, it, flip them back this way. Because it does have the limitation of not really being able, if I were to do a complicated maneuver to turn around, it would not be able to. Follow. Right, okay. So zigzag it a little bit more now if you can. I just want to see how. Uh oh. Uh, yeah, it'll lose it, and we have um, set up in the code if it goes a certain number of periods without receiving any signal, it'll it shut halts. itself off. So, so it, it doesn't, doesn't crash. crash into a wall. So it probably got a reflection off of the chair there or something. So the chair leg again. So that's it must have.
So over here, where you suspect that the poor angular response of the uh, of the emitters, uh, or, or more specifically the receivers, is what's causing an issue. It's pretty easy to lose uh, the pulses that we should be expecting because they're very they're very narrow. Yeah, very narrow. Yeah. Yeah. We went for very cheap receivers, and mm -hmm. I think that's something we could have uh, done better. Mm -hmm. Our original intent for the game aspect of it was to see how long you could go before it caught you, and now it's become more how long can you get it to chase you. Right, right. But let's, let's try to go further away. I think it should chase. So it's chasing. Yeah. It's not going to like those obstacles. This, this, this is yeah. a huge reflector, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I, think, I think you can see that the response time is uh, slightly slow. 